Tonight I want to minister from a text in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the last verse in that chapter. <coughs> I have in my own spirit a growing concern over the secondary position Jesus is occupying mm -hmm. in the professed church. This is growing on me more and more. It's, uh, and some of the prophets would say, the burden of the Lord concerning, you know, and then they would, they would speak. Well, this, uh, this is my burden at this present time. I see the uh, church as the largest evangelistic field in the world. If we can convert the professed church, we're going to be well on our way to some blessing. <laughs> Mr. June and I have been speaking about some of these things together as we pray each day. I can see that from the very beginning, in the, within the church, from the very beginning, there was injected a, a virus of unbelief. Paul dealt with it in all of his churches. He dealt with this where the faith was, faith was neutralized. And it kind of boils, boils down to this, that there is, there's these two approaches to life in Christ. One is that you've got you've got what it takes. You just have to like release it or or let it let it come out. Mm -hmm. It's all really resident in you. You 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 you've got what it takes. You just take some determination and let it go and this sort of thing. That's one view. It started this started way back in the first century. Mm -hmm. Paul called it work being saved by works. <laughs> That's how it and the other view is that you really don't, after all, have it in yourself. You've got to get it from God. That's, that's the other view. And that's the view that's going to be in sub, sub, subdued. And so when the pillar and ground of the truth, the church is to resurface this, that God is the not a source, He is the only source. You cannot receive what you need unless you get it from God. It doesn't come from anyone else. He uses his servants, I understand. As the things I'm going to minister on tonight are going to be, there's going to be a basic postulate or assumption behind this is that Christ is the embodiment of divine wisdom and power. Mm -hmm. All wisdom and power is, is uh, crystallized in Christ Jesus so that it can only be seen thoroughly in Him or experienced in him. Salvation is not a system. Right. Amen. And it's not a philosophy, it's sort of a different view of things. It certainly is not an organization. But it's salvation is in a name or a person. <clears throat> you remember the scripture says there's not none other name mm -hmm. under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and that which is given which is Christ Jesus. Or as Acts 10.43 says that we receive our mission of sins through His name. I'm showing here that everything comes through Christ. So that at any, at, any, at any point where Christ becomes minor, heavenly supplies are cut off. Mm -hmm. They cannot be experienced. Mm -hmm. Nobody will receive one minuscule blessing if there is such a thing as a minuscule blessing. No one will receive it unless it comes through Christ, and Christ will not function. He will not bless, lead, feed, or raise where He is secondary. Amen. Amen. It won't happen. So the gospel, that's what one of the great roles of the gospel is to elevate Christ and declare Him to be what He, what he really is, in fact, the only source. Amen. It's, on, it's only at His name that everybody's going to bow. So, right. we, so they, the, now we begin bowing now. Now the text, uh, Isaiah 53 and verse 12. <clears throat> Great messianic psalm. You would do well to spend a lot of time in this psalm here, in this uh, mm -hmm. chapter here. Therefore <clears throat> will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he made 
intercession, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That's just remarkable, the whole gospel mm -hmm. just sort of proclaimed in that, yeah. mm -hmm. in that little, little nutshell. That is because the context of this is God saw the travail of Christ's soul and was satisfied. We, we are the only, those in Christ have the only religion in all the world where a, that has a satisfied God. Amen. Every other God is not satisfied. He's trying to extract more things from the people to appease His wrath. But God's not asking you to do anything to suppress His wrath. Jesus has done that. And because of that, God has divided Christ a portion with the great. And Christ is going to divide the spoil, or what He got, with the strong. And the reason He's going to do it is because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors. He bare the sin of many, and he makes intercession for the transgressors. Mm -hmm. That's a quite a marvelous, mm -hmm. marvelous view of things. <clears throat> now let's look at this. He shall divide him a portion with the great. <clears throat> Nobody thinks of Jesus without associating him with great. Jesus has never, by anybody, been charged with being a bad teacher or a bad miracle worker or that did a bad job of walking on water or did a bad job of feeding multitudes with five loaves and two fishes. Nobody's ever said that he did, didn't do a great job in healing lepers. Or that when he opened blind eyes, it quite it wasn't quite sufficient. Or that when he let a woman go who was caught in the act of adultery, he didn't quite show enough mercy. God has divided him a portion with the great, so that every time you think about Jesus, every time you think about what he did, whether you agree with it or not, you have to say that a notable thing has been done we cannot deny. So that whenever Christ is thought little of, or despised or ignored is because he hasn't been seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. Portion with the great. <coughs> what a marvelous... Uh, he's a great teacher. He's a great savior. He's a great worker. He's a great intercessor. He's a great mediator. He's a great leader. He's a great captain. He's a great obeyer. He's a great revealer, a great reconciler, a great peacemaker. He divided him a portion with the great. Now when you think about Jesus, you think of him being king of kings. And lord of lords. He's divided him a portion with the great. He is called in Revelation 1, 5, the Prince of the Kings. He's not called uh, the Lord of Slaves. <laughs> He's not called the King of Vassals. Yeah. He's the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. He's divided him a portion with the great. And he's the Lord of Lords. He's divided him a portion with the great. And he's a Prince of the Kings of the Earth. He's divided him a portion with the great. To never think of Jesus as being over little things or insignificant things. For Jesus to be over you in a productive sense, God had to make a king out of you. Because he's the king of kings. <laughs> and Lord of lords. Now Jesus, uh, because there's a reason why God did this. <laughs> Jesus, he emptied himself. The King James Version said he made, him, he made himself of no reputation because there wasn't any other way he could be of no reputation. Mm -hmm. right. There's no body that could make Jesus of no reputation. There's no body that could have humbled Christ. He had to do it himself because he was great. See, <coughs> He was great. Well, yeah, and he is. And he humbled himself. See, God can humble you. Yeah. <laughs> but God didn't humble Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus humbled himself. Yeah. This is why, and this is why God divided him a portion with the great. 
He's now exalted. <coughs> How frequently the Word of God reminds us of the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you know, people will, will speak as though that we exalt Christ. We don't exalt Christ. We acknowledge Amen. He's exalted. Amen. There's a difference here. Philippians 2.9 says that God has highly exalted Him. So you don't make Him your Lord. Let's, let's just be clear about this. This is a lot of psychological babble that is being heard these days. Make Him your Lord. He is your Lord, Amen. whether you like it or not. You were going, he's going to judge the world in righteousness. He already is Lord. God's made him the Lord already. We, we acknowledge it mm -hmm. and submit to it by God's grace. <laughs> Hebrews 2.9 says, We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's the only reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And crowned with glory and honor. See, God's highly exalted him. We see Jesus as a high priest. And this is the kind of high priest we needed. Amen. To be saved, you had to have somebody like this who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Yeah, that's what it takes to save a person. You're not saved by divine sympathy. Yeah. Amen. Even though Jesus is able to be touched with the feeling of your infirmities, that's not what saves you. What saves you is He's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and higher than the heavens. And think somebody like that to get us yeah. into the presence of God. We've got that kind of person. Amen. And you know, see, he's, been high, he's highly exalted, and God's given him a tremendous inheritance. He said that in the second psalm, which is what we call a messianic psalm, is when David had the spirit of Christ, and he's telling what God is going to do in a coming Savior. And he said that God would say to the coming Savior, Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. God divided him a portion with the great. See? Nothing small given to Jesus. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> particular point I want to fasten on here is that Jesus, the exalted Jesus, divided the spoil with the strong. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I want to fasten on here. <clears throat> and he shall. Yeah. So this is something, this is an ongoing, this an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. First, God gave it to him yeah. as a man. As a man, he gave it to him. As an exalted, glorified man, he gave it to him. And now Jesus is giving it to the people. Amen. He shall divide the square with the straw. <laughs> now this event, this language, is built upon an incident that happened in, uh, during David's time. It's found in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. <coughs> David was not in his, in his full-blown glory at this time. Even though the Spirit of God was upon him, he was, uh, he was experiencing some hardship. In fact, on one occasion, the occasion of this particular chapter, the Amalekites, who were the people that picked off the stragglers when Israel was going through the wilderness, people lagged behind the Amalekites, kind of picked them off, mm -hmm. the weak ones. The Amalekites came to Ziklag, where David was, was housed, staying, and they, looked, they destroyed the city, and, and it, but they didn't kill anybody. They took the women, the children, and everybody, and took them away captive while David and his men were away. And when they came back, <coughs> David didn't have a massive army. There was 200 men with him. And he, he asked the Lord, what, what should I do? Should I pursue these Amalekites? And God told him to pursue them. Now, I just had this handful of, handful of men. There was actually a couple hundred other men were told about too, but the scripture says they were too weary to get over the brook. They just, they'd been battling and they were just wore out and they, they were too weak to pursue the Amalekites. So they stayed back behind and took care of the, what the Bible calls their baggage or their belongings that they took along with them when they were journeying. And David went off to battle against the Amalekites 
Then he gloriously uh, overtook, overtook them, captured all the men's wives back, the children back, mm -hmm. and had a triumphant victory, and spoiled them, which means took what they had and made it his own. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And he's coming back, and the 200 men that stayed back there ran out to meet him. And they were glad to see him. They gained a little strength while they were waiting. Mm -hmm. And the men who uh, were with David and said there were some men of Bedeal that were with him, they said, oh, we don't want to give them anything, any of the spoils. They didn't go with us out to fight, and they're not going to get anything in return. Mm -hmm. now, now I'm going to begin at that point, David's response to this. Mm -hmm. Then said David, ye shall not do so, my brother." with that which the Lord has given us. Mm -hmm. They were talking like, we did all the work, and why should we share this good, these goods that we did all the work? We shall not do it with that which the Lord has given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this manner? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, that's those 200 men, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff, that's the who stayed behind, they shall part alike. We're going to give $100 to everybody, so to speak. And it was so, from that day forward, that he made a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. Now that's the thing that spawned our Isaiah's text there, <laughs> there is that uh, Jesus is dividing the spoil with the strong, which includes the ones that apparently were strong and the ones that looked like they were weak but were able to keep the stuff safe. <clears throat> the psalmist takes this up also in Psalm 68, 18. <clears throat> Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast re received gifts for men, men, yea, for the rebellious also, that, that, the Lord God might dwell among them. How's that? So the, the idea here is that it almost adds a little something to it, that if the Lord doesn't distribute some of these goods among the people, God won't dwell there. God only dwells where, there, where what he gives is found. Mm -hmm. Then the next verse says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Just distributing the, the spoil, see? <laughs> who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. And God also whets your appetite that this is God's manner to divide the spoil. This is God's manner. We know that God has given everything into Christ's hands. Everything belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation 21, 7 says, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. Yeah. It's a dividing, dividing the spoil, and he shall be my son. <coughs> so that's, that's kind of the basis now, what we're talking about, is that right now he's dividing the spoil in measures mm -hmm. according to our faith. Mm -hmm. It's according to your faith. He's just dividing it. As you grow and advance in the faith, you get more. He gives more grace, and, and grace upon grace, as Brother mm -hmm. Levain told us. So it's not like you get a handful of grace, and that's it, it's a handful upon, you know, it stacks up according to your need and according to your appetite. Mm -hmm. He gives more. You get a strong appetite. You get more from the Lord. When I was a young boy with a ravishing appetite, my parents, we would visit once in a while different people's houses. <coughs> And there would be, a, we'd visit some elderly people that had forgotten about the variety of appetites that existed in people. I was a voracious milk drinker. You know, I'd drink a gallon of milk practically at a sitting. And I would sit on the table and be a little bitty glass of milk. And be one potato for everybody. Because I was taught that you just be quiet about it, just eat what you got. Well, they they, they, they just, they forgot. They weren't being mean, they just forgot. <laughs> but God doesn't forget. Right. Amen. If you got a hefty appetite, mark my word, you'll get more out of everything. Okay. Everywhere you're exposed to the Word of God, to the things of God, to the blessing of God, if you've got a bigger appetite, you will invariably get more. Amen. 
And the other person, they'll get what they can have. What is that? It's God dividing yeah. the spoil. That's what he's doing. He's dividing what Jesus got. He's dividing to you. What Jesus said, my peace I give to you. What was that? That's dividing the spoil. Yeah. The joy, I, I want my joy to remain in you. As he's dividing the spoil. That's what he's doing with the strong. <coughs> Now let's consider, consider the necessity of strength. I will divide the spoil with the strong. Mm -hmm. See, when David, he didn't divide the spoil when the men were wore out and too weak. Right. They had to kind of be refurbished <laughs> before they got their the division of the spoil. But when they were strengthened, were able to run out the meat empty, they got, he divided the spoil with the strong. So I want to establish here the necessity of strength. If a person is weak in the faith or weak in the Lord, that this by weakness limits what you receive. Isaiah said this, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. They shall, notice, I notice how you, this men, they, in or nature you crawl, you walk, you run. But now he's going to list it in reverse order. <laughs> they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jesus, how's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just the exact opposite of man. You start at the top. Yeah. In other words, when he gives you strength, he can fly upward out of trouble right, right away. You don't have to run out of it. Walk out of it. You can fly. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Well, why? Because it's necessary. You, you can't fly if you don't have strength. Yeah. You can't run and not be weary if you don't have strength. You can't walk. Walk here means like walk through a wilderness for 40 years. That's, we're not talking about walk down to the end of the street. Run means running in battle. Mm -hmm. See, there are certain things that require, that require an, an unusual amount of strength. The walk of faith, it requires stamina. Because mm -hmm. the walk is a long walk. And through a lot of rugorous, vigorous and rugged terrain, strength, <coughs> Paul, he knows this, so he prays for the church. Colossians 1.11, he says, I'm praying that you will be strengthened with <coughs> might mm -hmm. according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now that takes a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. I'm showing here that God divides the spoil with the strong, but He doesn't divide the spoil with the weak. He makes the weak strong, then they get the yeah. then they get the provisions. Amen. <coughs> here again in Ephesians 3.16, he prayed that. God would grant you, according to his riches, the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Why? So Christ can dwell in your heart by faith. Amen. The next verse says. Or here's another exhortation. I'm showing you the necessity now for being strong. This is 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch you. Be alert. Stand fast in the faith. Don't be shifting. No. Quit you like men. Be strong. Yeah. I see people that are great emphasizers on commandments. They don't. They never give this. <laughs> people that are what we might term legalists. Mm -hmm. They don't say be strong. We should say now that you're. I see that you are a legalist. I see you have this penchant for doing what God says. Am I not right? Then to lead them into this. Say yes and just feed them. In. That's right. I maintain you've got to do what God says. Amen. Amen. Be strong. You know, and you suddenly realize, well, the commandments of God require the strength and grace of God. See? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. See, God's not saying be strong just so you can make it through. You be strong because He divides the spoil mm -hmm. with the strong. The spoils of battle. He divides it with strong. Ephesians 16, 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Think of that. 
And if you wonder what this might does, he gives you an, an exhibition of the power in Ephesians 1. It's raise Christ from the dead and set him at his right hand in heavenly places. Be, be strong. <laughs> the strength is, uh, is necessary. Now let's be a little more definitive about who the strong are. Let's look at it from the end. After all the facts are in, who are the strong? They're the overcomers. The overcomers. They're the strong ones. See, the word of the Lord says, He that overcomes will inherit all things. I will be his God, he shall be my son. So that's, that's the strong. When all the facts are in, they're the ones that overcome. And that after the enemy has been put down, they're standing. There they are, standing. Again, Revelation or 1 John 2.14, I've written unto you fathers, that's a seasoned in the faith, mm -hmm. because you've known him that's from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, these are the ones that are not babes anymore, they're, they're advancing, mm -hmm. because you are strong. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God abides in you. You can kind of handle the things of God. Mm -hmm. And you've overcome the wicked one. See, it's strong. Mm -hmm. it divides the spoil with the strong. Now, if you just think these things out, you'll see it'll confirm to your heart that this is the way it is. That the stronger you are in the faith, the more you get from God. This is yeah. He divides the spoil with the strong. Everyone gets grace to come out from sin. Everyone gets grace to be forgiven that comes into Christ. But that's not the end of the matter. That's the beginning of the matter. Mm -hmm. Then God has things to give you according to your faith. Distribution of the spoils. Let's think about the, some of the some of the spoils that He's that He's distributed. <laughs> this is Ro Romans five five, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost which is given to you. Now think of it this way. Remember now, Jesus is the one dividing the spoil. He divides the spoil with the strong. Who loved God more than Jesus? And who knew more about God's love than Jesus? That's the love he's dividing to us. That, that's the love he's dividing to us. Let's spoil with the strong. Here, think of these ministries. He's divided the spoil now with the strong. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now think of him divided. This is dividing the spoils. There are differences of administration, different ways they, it works, mm -hmm. but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, how it, how it functions, but the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What's, what's, what's he talking about? Christ divides the spoil. In other words, Christ lets us participate in the victory he won. Yes. Part of which is that he gives some of his ministerial work to us. Yeah. <laughs> Through his Holy Spirit. He's dividing the spoil with the strong. When you think about being able to build someone up in the most holy faith, I will tell you, this is some work. When you think of being able to encourage somebody in the Lord or comfort them in the Lord, this is a, God's divided the spoil through Jesus Christ to you. Here's some spoil. <laughs> he just takes a large wagon load of the spoils, and here's what he says, 2 Peter 1.3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. That is to say, <clears throat> whatever is required to maintain your association with God, life, yeah. whatever is required to maintain a disassociation from the world, godliness, it comes from God through your personal acquaintance with God. Amen. Through the knowledge of Him. See, Amen. as you fellowship with Christ and you are conscious of the fact that He's with you, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about fellowship. You know He's there. See, the Cleopas and his friend walking down the road to Emmaus, 
There was a point in time when Jesus was with them, but they didn't know he was with them. But then as that, that, they sat down at the table, at the time they broke bread, then they knew Jesus was with them. That's the fellowship we're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fellowship isn't just Jesus being with you and you not knowing it, but getting blessed anyway. That's not fellowship. Yeah. Fellowship is when you know he's there, and that's, that's when you get the Amen. provision. <laughs> he doesn't dump it on you unexpectedly, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Think about this. We're talking about dividing the spoil now. Mm -hmm. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. This is what happens mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. You can't draw near to God through Christ and this not happen. Yeah. This is 2 Thessalonians 2.16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Mm. So we're not just consoled. Yeah. We're everlasting consolation. Amen. You know <laughs> it projects right out into eternity. And good hope, good hope. This is an I hope it all works out. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. I, and if God is good, I know he'll save me because I'm doing the best I can. I don't hear that so much anymore, but I used to hear that a lot. This things got so bad now, people aren't even doing the best they can in their own right. in their own mind. But uh, that's not what we're talking about here. Uh -huh. We're talking about everlasting consolation and good hope. Good hope makes you joyful. It makes you bigger than the problem. Whatever comes against you, the hope is overshadows it. It's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. See? It's dividing the spoil. That's what that is. Again, Acts 5.31, think of this. God hath exalted him to his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel in remission of sin. What's he doing? He's dividing the spoil. Give repentance and remission of sin. Or Acts 11.18, when they heard these things about the Gentiles being converted, they held their peace and glorified God. What, what does he mean? That they quit, they quit asking about, is it possible for the Gentiles to be saved? See, for a long time, they kind of t talked among themselves about whether or not it was really possible for the Gentiles to be saved. Yeah. But finally, when it broke through to them in the head, but they, that was the end of that discussion mm -hmm. on the matter. Mm -hmm. And they glorified God, saying, God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Mm -hmm. What did he mean? He divided the spoils. Yeah. And you see that? And there's a numerous examples, of course, <coughs> numerous examples of this in the in the in scripture. I'll just take some of these famous promises from to the churches of Asia in Revelation two and chapters two and three. Think of these as dividing the spoil. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now I feel oh, this is how I think. If I'm eating from the tree that's in the middle, then I must be in the middle too. Amen. Right? That's right. That's the dividing the spoil. Amen. See, this was just like the Amalekites took away what David's men had. <laughs> the tree of life has been taken away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They took it away when they sinned. Now he's going to divide the spoil, give it, yeah. mm -hmm. give it back to us. It's going to be better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the serpent won't be hanging around that, uh, <laughs> another tree there. Here's another, Revelation 2.11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt for the second death. <laughs> See, you can look, look at it right in the face and it won't hurt you. Yeah. See, we'll be there when people are consigned to hell. Yeah. We'll be there. Kind of a dreadful thing to think about, but some of our relatives may be that part, may be among those yeah. people we knew, people we worked with. Here we weep about it. We're not going to do any That's weeping right. there about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll just shout, "Just and righteous are thy judgments, O Lord God of truth." Amen. We won't be hurt by it mm -hmm. any more than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were hurt by the fiery furnace. We will not be hurt by it. What? What's he doing there? He's dividing the spoil. Amen. Because Jesus. Having risen from the dead, the scripture says, dies no more. Yeah. See, it can't hurt him anymore. It can't hurt you either in that day. 
Here again, Revelation 2.17, dividing the spoil. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden, the hidden manna. Man. Well, if you know, familiar with the account of Israel, there the manna that wasn't hidden was on the ground. Mm -hmm. The manna that was hidden was in the ark, yep. in a golden pot. <laughs> you didn't eat of that manna, but you are in the world to come. <laughs> Good to eat of the hidden manna, things that the... Now we eat the man off the ground, but there's, there's, there's rich nourishment that we just aren't able to receive in the body. But we will eat of the hidden man, and he's going to divide the spoil. And I'll give him a white stone, <coughs> and in the stone a new name written. See how the image there is of the Urim and the Thummim stones that were in the breastplate of the high priest, and they were used for decision making. They had names, names on them. The breastplate had names on it. They, but they were common names. Everybody knew those names. But you're going to receive a name nobody knows but you. It's going to be. That's how personal it's going to be. That's how personal it's going to be. Nobody's going to know the extent of what you've received from God, but you, the fullness, the fullness of it. Mm -hmm. But you, but you will know it. What's he doing? He's dividing the spoil. Mm -hmm. A new name which no man knows save he that receiveth it. So there'll be a way in which God can communicate to you that nobody knows but you. Dividing the spoil. Here's another. Revelation 2.26. <coughs> to him that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end. That's an interesting uh, concept, is it not? Normally you'd think he would say, keep my words. Yeah. Normally you'd think, keep my words. Jesus keeps my works. Uh -huh. yeah, what, what, what works are those? Those are the words where he poured out his soul unto death. Uh -huh. uh, Amen. And he, he took away sin and made intercession for the dead. That's, that's the work he's talking about. You keep those. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, to him I'll give power over the nations. Amen. That's distributed. Jesus has power over the nations. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to distribute the spoil. You'll have power over the nations. To what extent, we don't know, but it's, it's not going to be something small. Because he says you'll beat them in, into pieces with, with a rod of iron. Yeah. So it's going to... You're going to have dominion. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, 5. Dividing the spoil. I'll not blot out his name. He'll be clothed in white raiment, and I'll not blot his name out of the book of life. But I'll confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Well, see, Jesus' name has been exalted. Mm -hmm. Hasn't it? Yes. Uh, he's going to divide the spoil and exalt your name. Confession to the Father, to the holy angels. <coughs> Or how about Revelation 3.12? To him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. He divided the spoil. See, Christ, we know him by Jesus. See, there's a name he's received we don't know yet. Uh -huh. You don't know it yet. He's going to write it on. He's going to divide it. He's going to share his name with us. Yeah. How He's going to share his name with us. And, and lastly, Revelation 3.21, <coughs> To him that overcometh the light, grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and sit with my father in his thrones. He's, see, he's dividing the, he's dividing, dividing the spoil. What he's going to give you is what he is a portion of what he has. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> that's in other words, this is reigning with Christ. Mm -hmm. The Scripture says that we are joint heirs with Christ. We're going to get what he got in measure, like the soldiers received what David got by measure. You're going to divide the spoils. 2 Timothy 2.12 says we will also reign with him. See? Just as those men shared in what David's and his army took, we'll share in what Jesus has taken. Reign with him. And he's made us kings and priests with God, and we shall reign with him. <clears throat> now, these 200 men that stayed by the baggage stuff, they really couldn't make any boast about, you know. When they got their share of the spoils, they really couldn't make a boast about how many Amalekites they, 
they slew. And we aren't going to be able to boast either. That's right. See, the scripture says, he's going to divide this boy with a strong because. Because. Not because they're strong. Because. Mm -hmm. Number one, he poured out his soul. That's the one life that counted with God. Now you denied yourself and you crucified the flesh. You took up your cross, but that is that does not obtain merit before God. Right. That's what you've got to do, but that's not what has the merit. The merit is that he poured out yeah. his life. That's, that's yeah. what moved God. See, you can yeah. take up your cross and that doesn't qualify you. Mm -hmm. that's right. Just that doesn't qualify you to receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. You've only done what you're supposed to do. So that doesn't bring any credit. Mm -hmm. But what Jesus did does bring credit. Amen. So he poured out his soul. That, that's a death on the cross. He did it. Second, he was numbered with the transgressors. Somebody had to join in the place where the transgressors were. Mm -hmm. They had to take the transgressors' place. Amen. He was uh, he was on someone else's cross. He was in someone else's tomb. Mm -hmm. See, he was identified with the transgressors. Mm -hmm. He died as a, a as an apparent transgressor, as an apparent lawless one. He died. Now, this is why now he's divided the square with the strong because of this. And he bare the sin of many. The many here means as many as sin, which is everybody. He bore our sins in his body on the tree, and that's why he can divide the spoil with the strong. And I think of the thoroughness of Isaiah here. Yeah. And he made intercession for the transgressors. How's that? That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. That Christ's salvation includes this intercession. You can't you cannot be saved without Jesus forfeiting his life. Yep. You can't be saved without him being numbered with the transgressors. Mm -hmm. You can't be saved without him taking your sin away. Yep. And you can't be saved without him interceding. Amen. But he does do all these. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the Lord Jesus divides the spoil with the strong. Amen. So I admonish you to be strong. Yeah. <clears throat> Look for the spoils, and when you get them, when you get some advantage from Christ, something that gives a sense of blessing and a sense of being, just remember it belonged to Christ, mm -hmm. and He divided it with you.